Okay, so let's get right into it. We're at PCSX2.net. We're in the download section. We're going to skip the stable releases and we're going to go down to the nightly builds. Here, you're going to see that Linux is available to download and we're going to go here. Now, depending on your system, if you have an older CPU architecture, you got to make sure that your CPU has the instruction set available to be used. If you have an older CPU, SSE 4 would work. If you have a newer CPU, AVX 2 is the one you should get. In the case of my secondary PC that I have here, you can actually see that this does not support AVX2. It works up to AVX1, but I can use SSE 1 through these numbers here. So in my case, I'm actually going to have to get the SSE4 version. Once you've downloaded ECSX2's app image, you're going to right click on it, go to properties, permissions, and is executable to launch. This would be how I would go about it if I were on a Steam Deck. But since we're on an Ubuntu based operating system here, we have access to app image launcher, which basically takes the app image, integrates it into the system, and then we can use it from say these categories that show up when you go into your context menus here. I'll skip this, double click it, continue. And here's app image launcher, integrate and run. Here is PCSX2. Now, just like with DuckStation, you're going to have to provide this BIOS files. Again, these are things that I cannot distribute here, but it's an easy Google search away. All you have to do is type PS2 BIOS inside a Google search and plenty of options will show up. To add the BIOS, I'm going to go to my system settings and we're just going to go to the interface under the BIOS. This address here is where you want to paste your BIOS files. We'll open up Dolphin. This is a hidden file. So we're going to go here, show hidden. You can also control H to bring up hidden files. We're going to config, find PCSX2, BIOS, and paste your BIOS file here. Use the 1.6 BIOS file here. And as you can see, this is bin MEC NVM. Fast boot gets us past the PlayStation 2 startup screen, jumps right into the game. Under graphics, we have the choice between OpenGL, Vulkan, and software. We're gonna go to Vulkan, change the adapter, the X770, and we'll leave the rest as is for now, as we wanna launch a game, just to verify that this works with our system. Here in the main menu, you can see it's asking us for a game directory. I'm going to go ahead and point to a directory where I have some ISOs set up. It's asking us if we want to have a recursive scan. I like to say yes, in case I pull out games or add games to this directory, it'll update that information. And once you do so, you'll see that your game list shows up. Now that we have our games listed here, what we're going to do is set up our controller. We'll go to settings, controllers, go to the first slot right here. I'll choose automatic mapping for my Xbox One controller. And there it is, the controller is already mapped out to the PS2's configuration. We'll close this and we'll go ahead and launch a game. Okay, and now before we jump into the game, we have a few things that we can do here. If you wanna just play, you can just go ahead and play the same aspect ratio keep the native resolution but we're gonna do a few tweaks to that now we'll go to the graphic settings what i'm gonna do first is turn off this anti-blur setting and here for our aspect ratio we can turn our game into a widescreen game we'll go 16 by 9. as you can see the screen is stretched but we will fix that We'll go down here to enable widescreen patches. I like to enable no interlacing patches. We'll stay consistent here, 16 by 9. We'll leave this automatic. We'll turn this to sharp. We'll head into the rendering tab. The one thing we'll change here is our internal resolution. I'll go to 3x native. Everything else we'll leave alone. 
because PCSX2 is actually now handling these settings on a per game basis. So there's not much that you need to change unless you know that there's a specific change you need to make. We can close this. Now, what I did to the game was I restarted the game and now we have the widescreen patch working as intended. We're gonna jump into this race. Now you can see the game's working. There you have it. This pretty much sums up how quick and easy it is to set up PCSX2 on your Linux desktop or Steam Deck. Now the resolution settings are dependent on your hardware. If you found this tutorial useful, please give it a like, share this with a friend, and you may want to subscribe for more because this is the second video in my emulators for Linux series. I have a lot more of the CD based systems coming up, so stay tuned for those. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you in the next one.